The opening of the 39th annual SATA conference was held in April. The local and overseas delegates had the opportunity to attend showcases by MT on FTTX, IPTV solutions and data center. The mighty CEO Sherry Singh becomes the new chairman of the Southern Africa Telecommunications Association. The managing director of labeling industries, Yanis Federbe, becomes the newly elected president of the Association of Mauritian Manufacturers. In this edition of Business Connect, he gives his views on the importance of regrouping all Mauritian manufacturers under one umbrella. Today in Business Connect, we are in Ficon Flac at uh, the Sofitel Resort for the 39th SATA conference, SATA, which is the Southern Africa Telecommunications Association. The theme chosen this year is ICT connectivity and service delivery for the benefits of all transforming our society through broadband and ICT development. This uh, conference is hosted by Mauritius uh, Telecom and the strategic plan 2019-2022 has been unveiled. Other, another news is the CEO of Mauritius Telecom, Mr. Sherry Singh, taking the chairmanship of SATA. What is the conference all about? Let's have a look. <laughs> Mr. Sherry Singh, congratulations. Uh, for being uh, nominated as the new chairman of SATA. Uh, please tell us, why is SATA so important? And please remind us, what does uh, the organization do? Thank you very much. Um, well, SATA is important firstly because it is an arm of the SADC. It rejoins uh, 15 member countries and we've got two international members as well. Um, the purpose of uh, SATA basically, uh, when it was set up and even today, is to foster the development of uh, ICT related uh, development that is can help transform our societies. So we got many issues in society uh, from ranging from poverty to uh, health and well-being to education, a lot of challenges. And uh, SATA as an industry that means brings together all the different regions and operators to see how we can help in the alleviation of, uh, of such issues and also to reduce the digital divide because Africa um, in different parts of Africa, I think the context and the situations are really different. Uh, so as an industry, uh, we come together to see how we can harmonize, how we can help each other grow. So that's basically the role of SATA. As the new chairman and also with this strategic plan 2019-2022, what is your vision and mission for SATA? So, um, the previous uh, chairman has, uh, for the first time, uh, made sure that we have a strategic plan, 2019 to uh, 2022, actually. And I think that serves as a basis for what uh, I personally have to achieve as chairman of SATA. Um, it comprises of two things. One is that the board of SATA, comprised of CEOs of various organizations, uh, they come together to enumerate a number of res resolutions. So, we have adopted five. Um, and basically they are the priorities that we need to work on on an operational basis. Uh, but my second role, I think, is also to uh, see how to charter the future course of SATA. Um, I think the industry has evolved and um, today we have uh, incredible challenges, but we also have a unique opportunity to see how to meet these challenges. Uh, as you're aware, for example, in Mauritius, uh, we've done a number of things uh, that have not only transformed the ICT landscape, but also uh, has helped society at large. And I think as operators and developing uh, you know, infrastructure for the country, it's important that we think not only of the commercial developments, but also of how to help society, how to help transform society. And um, the lovely thing about uh, technology is that it allows you to be creative and, and, and find solutions and people are always interested with it. So we have, I think, a very exciting way ahead. What we have been trying in our country as well, you will see... Uh, during your speech, uh, you mentioned that uh, the most important thing in telecommunications is the value added that it brings to society. And being part of this uh, regional bloc, what are the challenges but also opportunities that are there for Mauritius? 
So, yes, I, I did mention um, if I take uh, an individual, for example, and uh, let's say I give you a laptop uh, that is uh, su supremely uh, powerful, uh, but you can uh, not use it because you don't know how to use it, that laptop is of no use to you unless it helps you do something. But uh, if, you, if the laptop helps you email and it helps you communicate and, and work on spreadsheets and do, do things that help you or an organization or society or the country, then that technology is valuable. So uh, the challenges for Mauritius, I think uh, um, from a Mauritius standpoint, we're already in line with what SATA wants to achieve. Um, they also, a lot of the member states view us as leaders and as much as that creates pride, it's a lot of responsibility as well. I think uh, we need to continue leading uh, the continent. Uh, as you're aware, we already eighth in the world in terms of fiber connectivity, number one in Africa. In so many other ways, we, are we, we really are, are, are doing amazing stuff in Mauritius. Yet, I also think that humbly we need to learn from the other member states as well. There are things that they are achieving and doing that we could really learn and apply in Mauritius. So it's all about the sharing uh, that we do together and I think uh, SATA is an incredible platform uh, to achieve great things. Mr. Morris, thank you very much for giving us uh, your time. Uh, please tell us why it was important for you to attend the 39th SATA annual conference here. It goes without say, being a leader in the industry and with Huawei's end-to-end -end portfolio, if we look to the future towards 5G, there's amazing things that, that are going to come our way. There's amazing innovations that will ultimately change lives, that will change the way that we live in, in big ways. Um, I'm part of the regional office from s Southern Africa, and we've got offices in all the countries in Africa. So we understand, we've got a very clear understanding of what the requirements of our customers are. And we have a responsibility to come alongside operators, regulators, and our customers to, to help them and to guide them towards what the future holds. And that is of critical importance for us because there's a lot of unknowns, there's a lot of questions and clarity that people need. And, and part of this program for us uh, this week was to just come and inform and show them a bit, give them a glimpse of what the future holds. Because we are a global player in more than 170 countries, um, we've already spent in excess of 600 million US dollars on 5G development. We've got an end-to-end -end portfolio. We can already now take that world experience from other countries and try and duplicate it and show the guys. We understand uh, clearly and fully that Africa and the continent where we are is different from Europe. I'm not going to take what I apply in Paris and just introduce it in over here. So it's important to understand all of those dynamics and, and provide um, the countries and the operators a path to evolve towards where we ultimately want to be. Your views on the level of telecommunications in the SADC region compared to Africa? Um, I've seen, I've, I've been fortunate enough to be with Huawei now for 10 years and starting thinking back in 2008 when I started to visit customers in the region uh, where we are today, I've seen amazing improvements. I've seen amazing cooperation taking place. Um, I've seen policies, regulations uh, from industry bodies like SATA that come in and say, listen guys, how can we do it easier? How can we get those benefits and those technologies to where we want to be? And in conjunction with that, I've seen Huawei as a company come alongside and develop technologies that specifically helps in those areas. Um, an example would be our rural star type of technology, where in rural areas we can connect the unconnected where there's now AC power as an example, which really then transform lives and villages and get them connected. And that is the first step, is getting them connected, uplifting it, stimulating the economy, which helps entrepreneurship, new ideas coming to the fore, and all of those things. So massive things have happened. We're moving in the right direction. I'm very proud of our partnership in these industries and what we've been able to help with in our guiding and assisting with all of that. But, but I take my hat off for Africa, and we've got an exciting future. I think the next 10 years, we're gonna see amazing things happen in our region um, and, and it's all good, it's all for the better of us. And also Huawei is one of the major uh, partners of Mauritius Telecom. Yes. What are the major breakthroughs and uh, developments happening with Huawei at the moment? 
Mauritius Telecoms, I do a lot of case studies. We, we do a lot of white papers, do comparisons between countries. Um, and, and, and we want to showcase where, what was done and how it was possible and learn from those lessons. Can we duplicate it in other countries? Mauritius, amazing. What we've achieved with them, the way that, that we've partnered with them, where we looked at how it is possible to attract new avenues of, of revenue, as an example, because one of the challenges we have is the population size, all right? So, so we can't just say, all right, let's aim for 100 million people or 50 million people. So the way that they deployed their network, I mean, uh, you know, Mauritius being number eight in the world in terms of fiber penetration, so it's really uh, the, 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 the jewel in the crown, so to speak, in our region. Um, and there's valuable lessons that we learn in these experiences when we, long, we walk alongside them. And I think um, ultimately what I always say to our customers is it's a question of if, if they win, then we win. If my customers lose and we do not connect and we do not provide the services that their customers come to expect, then we've got a problem. Um, and, and I can just say uh, thank, thank you to them for hosting this event on this, this beautiful place. It's always a pleasure to come here um, and, and see what can be done. But now, again, I'm going to go back to our region, take what we've learned and see then how can we apply and, and, and motivate others to say, all right, but let's do the same. Mr. Wono, you are the representative of Nokia. Why is it important for Nokia to be present at the 39th annual SATA meeting in Mauritius? Well, it's a lovely location to start off with. Uh, but also, as Nokia, it's important to understand what our customer wants are, so what our customer requirements are. And they are different in every country. Every country has their specific requirements. So for us, as Nokia, it's, it's great to be here at an event where we have CEOs from various regions all getting together and sharing their views. So listening to those views actually helps us to make better products for them. And is this conference in line with the mission and vision of Nokia? I would turn it a bit around saying that uh, so, so the, the, the vision of Nokia is actually to connect everyone, right? So everyone to connect everyone uh, with everything, right? That's basically the vision, which is also what I see here with the, with the, the CEOs when they get together, that's what they want to do, right? And connecting everyone is even more meaningful in Africa, right? Like compared to West Europe, but basically everyone is almost connected, right? Well, here there are still some challenges to actually connect really everyone uh, to, to the internet and to the communication channels. What is the importance of improving telecommunications in the African region, especially for the SADC block from a point of view of Nokia? Okay. So what I, what I learned uh, also yesterday from CEOs talking is how people's world is opening up as soon as they get connected to the internet, right? Uh, we, we let yesterday we heard about people saying that students who did not have the internet connection who for the first time in their life actually got connected to Google were looking up to see and where they could go to universities, right? So this is an indication, even at this very small scale, how big being connected can change your life. You're doing a presentation. Do you mind sharing what will you be presenting? Definitely. So uh, we're looking at uh, some of the challenges that operators are facing. Uh, we, saw, we talked about basic just getting connectivity. That's, that's one thing. But it goes way beyond that. As soon as you get connected, what are you doing with that connection? Right? So that it for, for consumers, it means they get more bandwidth, they get more communication channel, more content. Uh, they can do fun things like more gaming, watching TV. For industries, it means that they can change the way that they do business. Uh, we've seen this digital transformation with many industries already. Uh, we had the newspapers going from, you know, the paper newspaper from the electronic newspaper, the books going from, where is the books to the e-book? But also what we're now seeing is those bigger industries, like the mining industries, manufacturing, retail, harbors, they're now using more of the digital transformation to also improve the way that their economies are, are growing. Right? So this is the big change that we're going to see from digital transformation from businesses, which are a bit like, I would call them digital industries, more to a transformation using digital to control the physical industries like mining and, and retail and harbors. Do you think Mauritius is doing well in terms of telecommunications? Well, I was actually surprised, to be honest, uh, when, when I came here, because I didn't really have spent much thinking about Mauritius before I, were actually, before I came here. So it's, it's, it's great to see. Uh, I saw all these uh, great demos from the IPTV and, and, and the smart home devices, which I think is quite advanced, 
right? If I, if I, if I look at the compare with the European market, IPTV is a given. I mean, IPTV is a given. Now, 4K, I've seen here, 4K was launched a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago. Uh, actually, in my home market, I don't have 4K set-up boxes yet. Right, so just, just to compare, so that, that's quite an improvement. Uh, I see here also Mauritius Telecom is looking at smart devices, so being uh, looking into the smart home, which is something quite daring, I must say, because quite a number of operators are hesitating to go into that market. Right, so I, I, would, I would sort of classify Mauritius as, as advanced into the whole telecom uh, section, sector. Right? Compare, if I compare it to the world, uh, world view. <laughs> So, Yannis Vedeb, uh, you are the newly elected president of the AMM, Association of Mauritian Manufacturers. Why the need to have manufacturers regrouped under one umbrella? Well, it's important to put forward our common strategy uh, as an association uh, instead of having individual companies of different sizes uh, pushing forward their, their agenda. So, I think uh, the, the, the key for us is to work with our members to define um, strategies of development for the future uh, and consolidate all that through the AMM. Uh, this is something that we've done and embarked on for the last 18 months. So there's a few uh, strategic uh, development areas we focused on, uh, innovation, um, uh, training and, and coaching, international and exports. Uh, sustainability. Those are, to name a few, but four uh, integral strategic uh, poles we're pushing forward as an association with our members. You talk a lot about innovation. We know that either you innovate or you evaporate. So how do you see the situation in Mauritius? What is being done in this field? Um, I think there's a lot that's been done already in terms of innovation for the product quality. Uh, but innovation is not limited only to the quality of a product and, and what new products that you, you bring to the market. Um, the Mauritian market is quite a mature market, um, hence the need for uh, innovative products through the umbrella of uh, Made in Maurice, I think, which is important because it, it, it consolidates the message about sophisticated, innovative and quality products we want to put through. Uh, but innovation goes further than, than just for products, like I said. Uh, I think it's all the process uh, that comes through it in terms of the manufacturing and the production, um, whether it's in terms of uh, digitalization, automation, uh, anything that, that can add value, in fact, to, uh, to, to the whole chain of, of production. Mm -hmm. Now, what are your personal views about our manufacturing industry? Uh, what needs to be done or what is being done to promote Mauritius as a ma strong manufacturing nation compared to our competitors? Well, first of all, I think we need uh, good recognition in terms of uh, the contribution of a local manufacturing industry uh, towards the economy. Um, in terms of domestic-oriented enterprise, we represent probably about 7%, 8% of uh, GDP. But when you put all manufacturers together, including export-oriented uh, enterprises, we represent 13 or 14% of GDP. So it's a uh, significant impact that we have in terms of value creation that we do um, in terms of our economy. Uh, each rupee that we produce in Mauritius creates value, creates employment um, and, and adds to, to our economy. Uh, I think that's very important and needs to be recognized further uh, for the future. Now in terms of our positioning, we've got 40 years, 50 years of experience in the manufacturing sector. Uh, and I think that we've got uh, great uh, companies of different sizes that uh, needs to be, like I said, decomplexed towards uh, export. Um, so I think the key for us is export promotion and import substitution are two key policies and measures that's going to help promote the manufacturing sector locally. Mm -hmm. forever. Now you're saying export, we know that our local market, domestic market is a very small market. Uh, manufacturers are looking for larger markets. Do you think that uh, when we promote export, we might have a tendency to uh, neglect our local market, that we get more from export and neglect the local market? How to uh, keep a balance within that? 
Well, I think balance is important, but it, it works together. Like I said, the both measures, whether it's export promotion or import substitution, uh, that is basically producing locally, um, is, is works in in an. It's not exporting at the expense of local business. That's never been the case in the past, and it's not going to be the case. Uh, it's just that offering new possibilities, new opportunities for the Mauritian companies to export and touch new markets like the Eastern African uh, community, uh, which is large. By doing so, again, the important message we want to put through is that we create more employment. By exporting more, we uh, expand our capacity locally. We create more employment. We invest into uh, innovative processes and equipments. Um, we uh, create new companies as well because obviously uh, going onto new market means that you probably need new or other product. So as an entrepreneur, that will help us to uh, reinvest uh, the money we gain from export locally. Now we're talking about manufacturing. You know now, uh, services is growing part of our economy now, moving from monocrop industrialization. Now we're going to tech services, financial services. How do you uh, integrate all those services in the local manufacturing uh, sector? Um, I think it's important industries for Mauritius, and, and uh, the decision was right to diversify and look at new sectors to create this, uh, this growth for the economy. Uh, what's missing today is uh, synergies between the different sectors. It is critical for us to create through AMM those synergies with the financial sector um, and the other uh, industries and, and sectors. Uh, global business companies in Mauritius, uh, there are quite, quite a lot. Uh, figures we have is about 10, 11,000. If you compare it to Mauritian companies, we, we probably about 500. So uh, there is an untapped potential from global businesses uh, and the idea is to try to create those synergies to see with our partners in the financial industry how we can create this network to uh, have those global business companies work with local manufacturers um, more. Uh, there's probably not a few working. There's uh, one company I have in mind which is AB InBev which is one of the biggest brewer or the biggest brewer in the world um, that's established in Mauritius. They uh, probably employ 300 people today, 300 Mauritian. They do some production locally with manufacturers, but we want to see more than that. There's probably only a few of them that are doing it. Uh, the potential is there. 11,000 companies, if we can touch like 100, 150, and uh, for different sectors, it's not just manufacturing, but there's also companies established in the global business that can work with uh, our construction industry uh, and, and other industries. So I think the, the scope is there. We need to create those synergies to better interact with the different uh, industries. Well, that's it for this edition of Business Connect. To find this program on our website and also follow us on our Facebook page. We'll see you next time, next week. Till then, it's goodbye from the whole team.